Welcome to the Dave Palma Show, the podcast that revives, restores, and awakens your innermost capabilities. You have the training and the talent to succeed, but do you have the guts to fail? I love what I do. When you love what you do, you want to be the best at it. Today is about the power of you. You will change the world. Find your path to success through the journey of those who have succeeded. And now, your host, Dave Palma. Hi, welcome, welcome back to the Dave Palmer Show. And with me in this uh, episode, I have the author of The Ultimate Experience, and uh, she creates an inspirational paradigm shift, changing the mentality of I can't to I can. Morgan Linson, welcome to the Dave Palmer Show. Hi, good morning. Well, thank you for having me. Yeah, good morning. Well, I should say good afternoon here in the UK, but uh, okay. yes, <laughs> it, it doesn't yes. matter. It's a global show, so <laughs> if you're sleeping, uh, good evening <laughs> or something yes. like that anyway. Um, good morning, uh, people, good evening, good afternoon. Yeah, people listen to podcasts at any time of the day, so that's a great thing, a great thing. Yes. And yeah, fantastic. I um, so have uh, some, some great similarities. I, I have a great interest in travel as well myself. Um, but I haven't done so much of it. And obviously the pandemic obviously slowed it down a bit, which obviously we can, might have time, a little time to touch on that subjects as well. But, uh, really we want to talk about your ultimate experience, which you've had, because mm-hmm. obviously you've traveled to 70 plus countries. Um, uh, and I know your background is a nurse, uh, and you're also a professor, it says on your bio. Yes, I am. I yeah. am. I teach uh, uh, nursing at the oh. local community college here, yes. Oh, wow. Well, fantastic. Fantastic. Well, uh, my background is in uh, firefighting. I was a firefighter, um, so I, I don't do that anymore because, as you know, firefighting is a shorter career than nursing. Uh, yes. Um, so uh, I have time to do things like <laughs> podcasting. Uh, yes. wrote, wrote a little book <laughs> myself, but not, not as exciting as traveling around the world. So, um uh, let, let's get to it. So, so what, what okay. got you writing this book? I, I, I see you've done some traveling. So, yes, um, pretty much a lot of people, they, they see my travels. Um, I created a YouTube channel, uh, YouTube channel called Morgan Explorer. And so because I travel so much and I travel solo, um, so many people was reaching out and they constantly are asking me, how, how do I do this? Or, you know, how do I put this together? And a lot of people were intrigued to know that I, I don't have, I don't use travel agents. I pretty much do my own research and I, I just conduct my, uh, trip according to how I would want to spend my time. And so that really compelled me to just put it all in the book, um, and just, just tell my story and also just my experience and how I received the ultimate experience every time I step foot off of a plane into a foreign country in a foreign place. Yeah. Well, well, it's quite exciting. Um, I mean, the most of the time, well, I used to do track as well. So I I was actually international as well. So I've traveled, stepped off the plane and traveled or even the coach, if it's in Europe and they just take a coach across the, the pond the upon the other side <laughs> going to yes. France, not not to uh us <laughs> let's yes. say the pond in france <laughs> but um, <laughs> of course when it's my own holiday uh, holidays or in, indeed anything else i'm doing um it's it's it, if it's in a really warm place then you can feel that heat once you walk off the plane but of course right. you can get that in the us can't you it's so diverse with with you know different states isn't it very much so. Very much so. Um, people will be surprised to know, even though I'm, I'm born and raised in Los Angeles, California, uh, I don't really travel too much in the States because, uh, you know, to me, I mean, state to state, we, we have different, um, we, we have adversity as far as like the climate and things of that nature. But I'm just a really like a foreign girl. Like I like to get on the plane and go as far as I can and explore just, you know, different cultures, different um, religions, uh, ethnicities, like just all of that. I'm really into the culture of things. And so in the U.S. culture, even from state to state, it's pretty much the same, but we might just have, you know, different, um, I guess, similarities. But it's United States is just uh, 50 states of pretty much the same that I'm used to. So um, I really found my niche. Uh, overseas and that was that's like where 
I really get the the most experience or the best experience. Yeah. So, so when did you first start doing this then? So my first encounter with traveling, um, I had my, my ex-boyfriend when um, I was about 20 years old, he was playing ball overseas in Sweden and he sent for me to come for a Christmas um, a break. And so I came and I was absolutely like blown away by um, just the difference from in, in Sweden from United States. And so from there, I was like, okay, well, as soon as I finished with my schooling, which I was in nursing school at the time or doing my prerequisites for nursing. Yeah. And once I got done with my um, prerequisites and my program, I just had the money, I had the funds to go. And I just started just traveling all over the world. And I really felt it. I found it as a relief and in, in my mental decompression from um, just working as you know, you were a firefighter. So first responder, you know, we sometimes our mental health can be challenged yeah. by our daily work. So it was just my escape. And then it just turned into my hobby. And yeah. then I just took it a step further and just, you know, started to really document my um, experiences so that I can really really inspire other people that are are scared to travel to get out in the world and see it for themselves yeah fantastic and they always say traveling is one of those big personal development best kept secrets it's 100 percent. yeah they say it's it's something you know if you are going to spend money get out and learn about the world around you um right. which which is fantastic um so obviously after Sweden you got hooked ever since. Um yes. and uh of course like me, you know, being in a firefighting profession and some firefighters do two two one job or even two jobs and uh, in America I know people have three jobs as commonplace. <laughs> mm -hmm. But uh, mm -hmm. of course um you know, unless you do lots of overtime, but you know, you obviously must have found it easy to fund. But in your book uh, ultimate experience you do you do sort of say you know get over these mental blocks of not being able to afford it and then things like that I, I understand is that right right uh, so the thing is also you know uh it, coming from where like LA I can go out and I can easily spend a plane ticket you know just on a weekend just going to the movies or going out to find dining and things of that nature so I found that you know just budgeting um not necessarily eating out all the time I, I you know sometimes i don't get my nails done it's just whatever i needed to do at the time when i did not have the funding to support my my desire to travel i did that i did i did the savings and i was cognizant about you know how i spent my money now fortunately um i i have my jobs and you know i make a good salary so i'm able to fund my uh, travel desires all over the world without having to really worry about budgeting. But for those who are not in the financial um, state to really travel or they might feel or believe that they're not, I, I just wanted to inspire other people, especially in the book, to read and just I give so many travel tips as far as saving and, you know, where to purchase the, 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 the inexpensive um, accommodations and flights and things of that nature, because, you know, I can go to South America for about five, six days for a thousand dollars. And that's including the, the flight, the accommodations and, and have an amazing, amazing time. And, and that could have stem from me just saving for, you know, a couple of weeks um and yeah so there's there's so much in the world and so much false uh, propaganda about traveling and how expensive it is yeah i mean you can find a you know budget in even in in uh, developed countries like the uk and us is yes. where you're budgeting yourself um and it is a very expensive place especially in london but there are ways and means <laughs> around all that um have you ever been to london before Yes, I have. Oh, oh, good. Okay. I actually next, have. next time you know, yes. I've never been to LA. Only New York, lots of times, and Miami once, and Jersey. And that's about it for the states. But uh -huh. next time I'm in <laughs> yeah. LA, when I'm in LA doing my big motivational speaking or whatever, 
with my book, I'll, uh, I'll give you a shout. <laughs> you can yes. share the stage with me or something. No, I'm joking. Yeah. We're not joking. But it could happen. You no know. problem. <laughs> <laughs> um, so, you know, another thing that I really do and I, I really tell um, other aspiring travelers to do is to compress their traveling. So when I went to London, it was actually I went to France first and then I took, a, you know, a, a short flight to um, London. Yeah. And that's how that's how I really have been able to tally up the the countries exactly. that I've been to yeah, yeah. because once you get on that continent you know like give you an example if I go to Africa um mm. I will go straight to Kenya and from Kenya I would go ahead and get on an hour flight and go to Tanzania so yeah. and I just move around or I might cross the border by foot so that's that's how I generally get the most bang for my book yeah yeah yeah, no, 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 that's, that's, that's great. Um, so just moving on to uh, uh, more on the, on the cost of living and everything. There's a cost of living crisis right now in the UK. I don't know if it's the same in the US. I think inflation is quite Oh, yes, there, so. it is. Um, yes, it is. And of course, during the pandemic, it wasn't just simply the cost of living. The travel industry really got, got, got hammered. Uh, yes. What, what would you say? What, uh, would would you have just? Uh, I mean, obviously, you worked more. <laughs> For reason, as a nurse, mm -hmm. it's probably even more a uh, uh, more of a thing to stay home and uh, stay <laughs> and and work. Yes. <laughs> Is yes. It, wasn't it really? So, uh, um. So, yeah. Um. Uh, during during the 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 pandemic, actually, um, a lot of people were in the house because it was safe, you mm -hmm. know. And but that was the time where I really got so much traveling in because you know number one i was faced with covid taking care of covid patients every day yeah. so i didn't have a fear of oh i'm gonna go outside and get covid i literally walked into work every day and looked and thank, COVID and thank you in the very face. much for that as well because obviously the thank first you. the first year of that was very dangerous for both healthcare professionals more so and yes. for, for um, because you're going to take the viral load more and the more exposure right. to it, aren't you? Uh, frontliners, right. frontliners. Yes. And of course, the patients who should be keeping themselves well, you know, safe at home at the time. So, um, right. But uh, yeah, so that's what you was doing at that time. Yes. What uh, uh, would you say? Because the travel industry got hammered. How, how how would you have seen it? And how would you say now the travel industry? They said it would take till twenty twenty four, maybe that it will come back. My sister just went to Jamaica from the UK for a holiday with uh -huh. the kids and managed to find a, a bargain flight, but the flights yes. were double the price. Yes. So, yes. So like during the during the during the pandemic, the flights were like dirt cheap. So, you mm. know, I was flying because, you know, everybody was scared. And so yeah, yeah. as soon as the, the, the pandemic let up and, you know, people could travel, everybody wanted to travel. So that was the time where the 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 travel companies and the um, the, the flights and everything doubled because they were trying yeah. to. Get you know, pretty back. much get their money back from, <laughs> yeah. the, from the hit that they took. Yeah. So, know. you know, believe it or not, the, the, of course, as you know, or you see on TV, the airports are still, no matter how, how expensive the flights are, people were so, um, in, in isolation that they are willing to pay these outrageous prices. And so with me personally, right now, I'm not traveling as much as I usually do because I'm, I'm actually in school again oh, <laughs> for right, the, okay. the last time. Um, okay. so I'm getting my doctorate in education. Oh, okay. Um, but at the end of the day, I still travel, um, when I can. And, and, and honestly, I'm so much of a travel junkie that yeah, yeah. I don't mind paying that those prices. Yeah, um, yeah. but for the people that, um, want to, and it's just super, super expensive, you just have to know what times to, to jump online. I would definitely recommend always doing it like on a Tuesday, early, early morning, like late right. night, early morning. Yeah, yeah. There's times where, the flights go down versus yeah. go up. So you just have to catch it on the right. Just keep looking, keep looking and you'll, you'll come across a good flight reasonable enough to book. And once you get your, which once you get your flight, you know, the rest is history. That's all. That's my first go-to is my flight. And then followed by my accommodation. I would never do it the reverse. Yeah. Yeah. Um, 
I I used a company called I, I I don't think it's as good as it used to be, but Sky Scanner. And there's a few mm-hmm. others now, Expedia. There's quite a lot now that you can use yeah. flights, isn't there? Yes. So my go to is mamando dot com, and people are like, "What did you just say?" So it's m o m o n d o dot com and they it's like it's a site where they have a conglomeration or they do compare and contrast like the best oh, okay. lights yeah so yeah. um that's my go-to you know but yeah. I, honestly whatever works for you works for you well i've never heard of memenda.com i'm just actually trying to punch it in myself i'm sure my listeners while they're listening to this podcast now is on their uh, phone now is actually locked in so i'll have to do google on it um but anyway, never mind. <laughs> um, yeah. yeah, well, I've never heard of it. But yeah, uh, Skyscanner kind of like just didn't, weren't really after the pandemic, weren't really given the flights that you could have got. Um, but I, and uh, so basically, um, they, I was struggling to get flights after the pandemic. Yes. Because uh, yes. I had to still fly after the pandemic, uh, going abroad yes. and things like that. Um, in your book, you also mentioned about using different sites for accommodation, things like that as yes. well. So I generally, uh, I, I just became a fan of or got, I guess, um, more acclimated to use a lot of my rewards points. So I have like my American Express and I'm like constantly using my card as pretty much like my debit card and paid in full every statement. Um, and then I use, I can redeem those points. But but beyond that, I use booking.com a lot. And when, yeah. with booking.com, you keep using it, keep using it, always using the same, like whatever you choose, because there's so many different um apps out here and different um, portals to be able to do your accommodation, I would just recommend, regardless of what you use, um, even though booking.com is my preference, regardless of what you use, use the same one over and over and over again. And hopefully, you know, whatever you're using, they have a loyalty, um, a loyalty program. And so those points accumulate and then you'll be able to redeem them. So Right now with booking.com, I'm a genius member. So what that, that yeah. means is I get the best, um, yeah. the, the best bargains. A lot of people use Airbnb these days as well. I mean, they couldn't during a yeah. pandemic and soon after. Um, but yes. once it was all clear, it was like, um, apart from New York City, I think they had this thing about restricting the, that kind of thing. But what would you say about yeah. that? So with Airbnb as a solo, because I'm a mostly solo traveler, because a lot yeah. of my friends, I'm, I'm 35 years old. So a lot of okay. my friends are already like married and have kids. Yeah, um, yeah. And so they can't just get up and go as I do. Um, yeah. However, so when it comes down to Airbnbs, I generally stay away from Airbnbs as a solo um, yeah, yeah. woman because of, you know, the possibility, you know, like if you're in a neighborhood, you don't know, um, you know, or if you have a renting in, in a loft or an apartment and stuff like that, people are seeing you come in and out. Um, yeah, you just yeah. don't know the neighbors. You don't know, um, what have transpired in that house or, or, or accommodation. So me, I just like to do a hotel, have yes. a front desk, have a security, you know, um, and just more visibility than, and also carbon monoxide is a thing now too. Oh, you know, some okay. of the houses are not, they don't have sensors or Protect they're not you, monitored. Yeah. Exactly. Yeah. And so Protect people us. are coming up, you know, being dying because they are exposed to a car- carbon monoxide while sleeping or whatever yeah, the case yeah. may be. So I just try to stay in well accommodated um, um, hotels that are, you know, that are four, four, five star hotels most of the time. That's right. what I really, you know, love to do. Yeah. Um, but then it comes down to affordability for, for four or five star hotels, isn't it really? 100%. Yeah. 100%. Um, but, but I would say, you know, first. right, right. Yeah. Safety comes first. And then also, you know, when you're coming, when you're going on the, on the holiday, you don't want to have a bad experience. Like if you have to just wait a little bit until you have the, the funding and the, the 
the desires of your heart to be able to really have the best experience, then I would just say just if you have to wait or just there's a lot of just good, good, good um, bargains out there. So just search, research, research, research. And so yes, that's why I like man. created the book to have yeah. all of the possible um you know, resources, all of the websites, everything that you need just to make the, 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 the dream trip of your life. And I mean, um, the book obviously sounds so excited because I think you've probably put your own experience of traveling in the book as well, not just tips for other people. Is, is that right? Yes. Yeah. Yes. So that makes it different to Lonely Planet, which is obviously just a kind of resource, isn't it? It's just only simply a resource and maybe solo travelers can use it and anyone this this is more unique in a way isn't it your book right right so the thing is also you know i put my top 10 uh countries in in there yeah. um i put experiences like how i feel like not just you know me being in a country that's one thing anybody can just go and travel but it's like how do you feel mentally spiritually emotionally you know mentally just all in one um being able to be free to um, learn and because the world is so big so sometimes we get so engulfed in our environment and we really forget you know how big the world is so I've just been so blessed and fortunate to be able to have my mind be so expanded to even have the desire to step out of the box um, and, and travel and, and see yeah. the world for myself. The, uh, what other countries uh, what are your top tens and what other countries have you been to? So um, not, you don't have to read the whole book, <laughs> but obviously, right, right. It's just yeah. A, just so, a... so my my top my top one, like my my favorite country in the world is Kenya. Um, okay. it's because I'm I'm a really I'm a real animal lover. I'm a, oh, a okay. lover of culture, yeah, that yeah. type of stuff. You yeah. know, hospitality and things of that nature. Yeah. Um, I just recently went to Japan in in April. It was awesome. Right. Like just. Oh. Uh, Japan is so far in a, in in the future. Did awesome you uh, stay in Tokyo? Yes, I stayed in Tokyo, um, and I even went to Osaka. Took a flight to Osaka. I went to Kyoto. So I was just kind of moving around because they have a really good train system. So it was just amazing. It was amazing. Yeah, yeah. yeah they, they've got. A, I mean, it's it's amazing in Japan and. The, but mm -hmm. I mean, they were always, you know, ahead with things like tech stuff and, and things yes. like that. Um, yes. I'm, I'm on par with America, but obviously China's trying to catch up now, really. So, yes. Um, so I, I would say that Africa's more the continent that you kind yes, of. Yes, that is definitely my continent. favorite continent. Continent. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, we could say continent first. I did spend a lot of my time when I retired to and fro in Asia. I mostly based myself mm -hmm. in, in the Philippines and then coming back Got to the it. UK, did some mm -hmm. you know, extra cash work and then uh, flew around from there as a base because it's so, it's less, apart from, I haven't been to Japan, I've been to China, but China is, isn't as expensive as you might yes. think it is. Um, yeah. And then of course, Southeast Asia is quite inexpensive i've been to australia as well bali yes. is quite nice um yes uh and, but my dad lives i oh, sorry my dad my dad's from an island just off the east coast of africa not far from kenya actually on the indian ocean uh okay just next to madagascar on the south of madagascar so that's uh quite interesting so i've been there quite a lot a few times okay <laughs> so yeah i, I, I want to go to miracles and also like uh, seychelles and seychelles yeah similar to seychelles there. and Maldives. Yeah. it's similar to that mauritius yeah. Mar it's called mauritius i don't even heard of it yes oh yeah yes. yeah yeah um and then my mum's from the caribbean so um and a lot of my family they've migrated to new york mostly which is why i've been to new york quite a lot um Got it. Uh, so yeah, there's quite a lot of uh, uh quite a lot of uh, relations more between New York and London because it's more close to the East Coast, isn't it, really? So, yes. And a lot yes. of people say, oh, New England is very much like England, which I suppose it is in a way. The trees and that looks very similar and the weather's similar and things like that. So, um, But anyway, um, so moving further ado, uh, yeah, I suppose for me, yeah, th those places were... were um, 
what are two in, in the Caribbean and, and obviously the US where I said I've, I've been to where the more mm-hmm. common, commonplace more than Europe actually but um I have been to Europe and I, when I did track I did go to some competitions as a kind of like your ex did basketball I did track so I had to do some abroad but of course Europe was more more commonplace <laughs> than going to the US right. doing it yeah um, yeah the biggest one I did abroad was in Malaysia and that was something called a Commonwealth Games it's like the Olympics basically but um, That's awesome. yeah so my traveling got integrated like that and then uh, I was able to take maybe five weeks sometimes six weeks off from work and travel do some tour you know touring traveling to different countries at the same time so yes uh, so that's how i did mine really um uh, but yeah not so much after the pandemic so i'd like i'd love to read your book and find out how to work the magic in that one because being, being a retired firefighter i need to <laughs> budget yeah, my money more yeah, <laughs> do a bit of, yeah. do a bit of uh, extra work and stay, save the cash and just get out there yeah. really but anyway, uh, we got over, uh, sp- touched on two mindset things, which is a being able to afford it uh, going and how to get over that, and secondly, obviously, the mindset of expanding your mind and broadening your horizon by traveling, haven't we? Yes, one hundred percent. It it it's just made me a more well rounded person. Um, even just being a nurse and like you know, LA is kind of like a melting pot, just like uh, New York. York, so we have like a lot of different yeah. nationalities and right, you know yeah. ethnicities, races, and, and stuff like that. So being yeah. able to have, you know, went to a person's homeland, and some sometimes you know some of the patients they might be of you know whatever like Asian descent, and they probably have never even been to their homeland. So you know to to have discussions and talk about that that type of thing, those type of things, and um, also I'm. A lot of people are very visual people. So like uh, most books that, you know, you just have a book and you just have like a lot of words. But like in my in my book, I have about 85 pictures of just me, different places and just really giving my readers a visual of not only what what it looks like in in that moment or in that place but also my expression or how I feel you know when I'm there and just really just trying to relay that that message how just it's it's really a great experience so this regardless you know sometimes people are just maybe curious about traveling but they really don't have a desire it's just For some people, it's really entertaining to even know. Um, In my book, I talk about geography and talk Uh about how many continents in the world and, you know, how many countries in the world. And a lot of people um, are are naive to that. They don't, you know, when I say, oh, I've been to 70 countries, they'd be like, oh, you've been to the whole world. And I'm like, no, it's 195 countries in the world. You know what I'm saying? So just educating people on the the basis of of the world. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, uh, absolutely. But there's still a fair amount of countries anyway for for someone in, my, in America. Apparently, seventy percent of people don't even have passports or haven't travelled abroad. One out of two, I can't. Oh remember. yes, yeah, yes, yeah. it's yeah. very commonplace. Well. Um, yeah, yeah, fantastic. That's, that's that's great. Um, but not only have you got um the book, you've also have a YouTube channel as well. Yes, yes, it's called Morgan Explorer. And um, initially when I started the the channel a lot when I said I was going to Africa and I went to Africa for the first time and I had an awesome and amazing time and then I kept going back and everybody like so scared for me they were like oh my god you're going to Africa you know you're going by yourself and I'm like chill like it's it's I feel more safe actually there than you know I feel even in the states because you know the the inadequacies and gun laws that we have here and stuff versus when I'm overseas, I I feel good. I feel safe. I can walk at night and that type of thing. So I started to document my experiences while I was in Africa and it just opened up a door for me to just put it on, you know, a channel and, and, and give like, I guess a fair exposure or a more accurate, um, accurate view of what I was seeing 
Because I, you, you can tell somebody all the time, like, I feel good, I feel safe, but for them to actually see it and get the visual, it changed the trajectory of how they really felt about, you know, what I was doing. So it, it really was, it's, it's been really nice to see, you know, all of the, the response that I get from people um, watching my blogs and seeing how um, much of a good time I have or, or what I do when I go out there because if there's so many like, you know, people struggling or when I go to anytime I go to Africa, I go to a, a orphanage. That's like my tradition to do and yeah. to, you know, give, give, you know, monetary um, gifts and, you know, food and whatever I can do to pretty much make a, a difference in the lives of someone that or the children that are struggling or whatever the case may be of the orphanages that are struggling. So um, that's pretty much what my YouTube channel entails. Wow. Um, what's the name again of it? It's called Morgan the Explorer. M Morgan Explores. Excellent. Um, so uh, tell us anyway, before we go, what, what did you think of London then <laughs> when you came over here? I, I missed that uh, one. <laughs> so I, I came in December, so you can only oh. imagine how how cold it was. Oh, so it was I cold. Came with, but so is New York, came, actually. <laughs> yeah. Yes, I came with... Um, East Coast. Uh, yeah, I came with four of my friends, and they were not really Impressed. good travelers. Oh, don't know so they okay. were a, they were really uh, like, "Oh my god, we're gonna die because it's so <laughs> cold." And I'm like, "It's not even that cold, you know, because we're, uh, we're from sunny California, so yeah, that's different." Yeah, that's you know? right. Yeah. But they really loved it. They really loved it. We they they didn't know what to expect. We were able to. We went out to like this little bar, and you know, they had like a game night that night. It was. Just oh, like okay. they were really, really happy that yeah, yeah. Um, we actually they actually liked uh, London better than um, when we were in Paris. Oh, really? Um, okay. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. So, yeah slightly yeah. different uh, kind of feel. But although you still feel you're in Europe. Um, yes, 100%. Yeah. I had, so yeah. I was only there for a few days because it was just a mini trip, wasn't it? Just from yes. your main Europe yeah. tour. Yeah, we like. spent most of the time in, in Paris. Um, oh, okay. Yeah. And so, yeah, we we're actually we Paris to this day. I know I've been there many times. Obviously, it's not far from London. We so we stay right by the tower, so we can see. Oh, we can okay. look out yeah. right and see the tower yeah, yeah. or whatever. Well, so, it's a great yeah. place to stay. I've stayed yes. in a hotel near there, near the Ritz Hotel, just around the corner, in another hotel, not the Ritz. Yes, <laughs> but yes. it wasn't. It didn't take me long to walk to. Uh, well, near Eiffel actually it didn't take long. Um, yeah, but it, it could probably take what they call the metro. Uh, the underground yes. in London. Yes. Yeah. Yes. Fantastic. Well, n next time you're there, I'll, uh, you know, you can give us a shout. Or if I ever do make it out to LA, as I say, um, I'm go I'm going to find a way to get all my guests and keep in touch with a whole lot of them. It has to be a generic email or something like that. <laughs> oh <laughs> yes, one hundred percent. Yeah. Yeah, I'm born and raised in LA, so it's like you know, sometimes when people are transplanted there, they can't really help you as far as like knowing everything. But yeah, I'm no, born yeah. and raised here, so you know, if you ever come out this way, just definitely shop. Like you know, just just hit me up, and yeah. I'll, I'll make sure I give you all the pointers that you need to have yeah. an awesome time in here. Definitely, yeah, definitely. Um, certainly a lot of like London there's a lot of celebs there and a lot of uh, nightlife and, and entertainment and things like that as well so um, I'm, I mean I'm, I'm not saying I'm just a hardened <laughs> night owl but <laughs> you know it's just it's, it's no no um, problem with en finding entertainment and enjoying yourself in whatever you want to do really it's diverse as well isn't it so Right. Yeah. Uh, you just Los have Angeles. to just be informed about yeah. it. And Los Angeles, actually, the nightlife here is pretty whack. I'm just going to put it out there because uh, everything closes about one, two o'clock in the morning oh, versus right, okay. when I go to New York or go somewhere oh, else. OK, yeah. You know, they, New the, the party's just now starting at that time. Yeah. Yeah. New York is <laughs> like, well, actually, if you're in, in this, the right in the center of London, where, where, where we call the West End. Mm -hmm. I don't know where you stayed in London. Then, yeah, the, the nightlife is is until five six. Um, but they've got like quite a few casinos now. They're rather than nightclubs, but even so, um, yeah, the licenses last long. But um, outside, it'll be more like LA outside um, the West End, if you like, which is a bit like saying Times Square. 
Yeah, I said we stayed like close to the Heathrow Airport, so oh, yeah, okay, yeah. So that's uh, (laughs) yeah, that's outside it. Yeah, so that there there wouldn't have been in a nothing like in the centre of London, but yeah. Um, anyway, London's London, isn't it? Really, I'd be the same. Yes. (laughs) Excellent. Well. It's great to swap notes as well and, and, and on our travels, but it's great what you've done there in terms of something outside what you're actually doing. It's great to speak to a fellow, um, I don't know how to describe it, but uh, someone that's done something frontline because obviously first responder, nurse, et cetera, obviously you deal more with paramedics if you like, don't you? So are, yeah. <laughs> are you an emergency uh, nurse or, or what area? No, I'm a, pro- I'm a progressive care nurse um, oh, okay. at one hospital and at another hospital where I work per diem, I'm an acute, acute rehab nurse. Oh, right, um, okay. so, yeah, I work a lot of jobs, but I have to work so I can fund this this oh, travel. Oh, exactly. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and then and then that's what it is. It's having a good work life balance and and that's what you do really uh and i think yeah. it's great great what you've done there so um yeah morgan it's really great pleasure having you on the show here and um, I, i'd love yeah. to really uh catch you up again and, and catch up with what you're doing <laughs> another, yes. on another episode yes 100 percent. thank you so much for having me today you're welcome and uh thanks for coming okay thank you that's all for this episode thanks for listening and remember If you want to support what we do, then share, subscribe and leave a review over on Apple Podcasts or head over to my website, davepalmer.com and click on Rate Show. Well, that's all for now, but I'll see you in the next episode of The Dave Palmer Show. Follow us on Facebook, Twitter and Instagram.